steak is here in Hamilton, Montana. Today I'm going to talk about growing oyster mushrooms. Oyster mushrooms are one of my favorite mushrooms to grow. They're relatively simple. They outcompete a lot of the other contaminants that you can give you problems with growing other varieties of mushrooms. And they taste delicious. Um, this setup is quite simple. You basically need two buckets and a lid. The lid is off camera. One bucket, you're going to pre-drill with half inch holes, about 15 of them or so, and then a couple smaller drain holes in the bottom. Um, it is important the ones in the bottom are, you know, maybe 3 sixteenths, a smaller diameter hole. Uh, one of the first buckets I ever did, I did a half inch hole on the bottom for drainage. And once you take this bucket out of this bucket to let them fruit, you set it on top of it. Well, I ended up with a half pound oyster mushroom shaped just like the bottom of that bucket. Still tasted great, but if you're looking to maybe sell these, it didn't look as pretty as the others. For the interior bucket where the substrate and the mushrooms are actually going to grow, I prefer to use a food grade BPA free bucket. The exterior bucket that you keep this bucket in during the incubation chamber, um, if you're really concerned about it, yeah, go ahead and get the uh, food grade BPA free one. But I find any old clean five gallon bucket will do. Uh, before you get going, it is important to you know do the best that you can to sterilize everything. So both of these have been soaked and rinsed off with a uh, diluted bleach solution. The other things you're going to need are some mushroom spawn. This is a Phoenix oyster spawn, which we chose specifically because it's also known as pine oyster, one of the few mushrooms that you can grow on pine wood and still eat. The other thing you're gonna need, of course, is your substrate. This, this is a pine mulch. Uh, there's a lot of pine mulch to be had around in this area, which is why we were looking for a mushroom that grows on pine. Uh, the forest industry is doing the best that they can to get rid of as many lodgepole pine trees as they can due to the forest fire threat that the pine beetle is causing. Oyster mushrooms, other varieties of oysters, grow on pretty much any form of agricultural waste. At some point in this video, you will see some pink oyster mushrooms that we're growing on straw. Um, we can also grow them on coffee grounds, cardboard. It's a very uh, rapid decomposer mushroom. And it does like a carbonaceous material, such as wood chips or straw, as most mushrooms do. A lot of people go to great lengths to uh, pasteurize their substrate. With oyster mushrooms or King's Triforia, you can basically ferment it. These wood chips sat in a trash can full of water for two weeks and just fermented. It went into an anaerobic process, and we recently dumped it, so all the anaerobes have died off. And it's basically a sterilized um, product at this point. So what we're going to do is we'll take our mushroom spawn and you basically are going to make layers in the bucket of the substrate and the spawn. Grab a couple handfuls, get a nice layer. I like to go real heavy with the spawn on the first layer and the top. There's no real reason for that. As long as you have a good mixture of the spawn in there, the mycelium, which is the, uh, the equivalent of roots for the plants, will, will spread. And you can see that's a real nice thick mycelium patch. But if you look at this, this is a grain spawn. They grew it on grains. All those little white bits, those are oyster mushroom mycelium. So you crumble it up, mix it in there real good. So we have a layer of wood chips and then a layer, a thin layer of spawn. And we're just going to repeat until the bucket's full. While I'm doing that, I'd like to talk about some of the reasons, aside from the culinary aspects, that as a permaculturist or even a gardener, I think incorporating various mushrooms into what you do is really important. Um, fungi are, 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 they're a, they're a very evolved species. They've been on this planet longer than most forms of plants, and they're very beneficial to plants. Um, 
Some fungi form beneficial relationships with root plants. Other fungi, like the oyster mushroom here, they, they decompose um, carbonaceous material, wood, leaves, etc., and help turn it into pumice or soil. So our, one of our hopes here, if we can get these phoenix mushrooms, phoenix oyster mushrooms to take well, is to use this bucket to propagate more spawn, which we'll cover in a later, at a later point. But since we have access to so much pine mulch, it would be great to speed up the decomposition of it and basically get an edible product such as oyster mushrooms while we're composting the wood chips. Other benefits of incorporating mushrooms into your garden or landscape are they actually, part of their digestive process, they create water. Lots of people think that mushrooms need water to live, which is true. You have to keep the, the substrate wet. You don't want it soaking wet. But once the mycelium is really going and it's breaking down the, the wood chips or the whatever that it's growing on, as it as part of its respiratory and digestive process, it creates water. So by incorporating these wood chips into our forestry areas, they're going to help improve the water cycle. We're also going to improve the mineral cycle. Um, it's a lot of fungi in the mycelium that break down rocks. A lot of times if you're out in the woods and you turn over a rock, you'll see a good patch of mycelium. You might not ever find a mushroom. The mushroom is just the fruiting body of the, of the fungi. But as that mycelium eats that rock, it, it mineralizes. It makes, turns those minerals in that rock into a plant-soluble form of nutrients, which, of course, we like because that's how we get our minerals, by eating plants or the animals that eat them. There's also a lot of grand research out there about how various types of mushrooms are really beneficial to bees. If you haven't heard of any of that research, I highly recommend you go to Paul Stamets' company, Fungi Perfecti, fungi.com, and uh, do a little search on um, mushrooms for bees. He's found that, I mean, he's still doing trials, it's nothing that's available commercially, but he's found that a lot of different fungal mycelium are really helping bees overcome a lot of the challenges that bees are facing today. And that right there is the inoculation process. All right, so we're back in the greenhouse four weeks later, and I've got two buckets with me. Right here, this is our pink oyster. And this is our phoenix oyster, or pine oyster. Uh, you can see we're not getting any fruit with the phoenix oyster. That's not the end of the world. We do have one baby fruit with the pink oyster. But you can see, we've got a bunch of little pins, or baby mushrooms, mushrooms that are trying to fruit. We're finding that growing mushrooms in Montana is more difficult than I had anticipated. Um, more specifically, what we're seeing with both, both buckets is we have fully colonized the substrate. And in a second, I'll open up the Phoenix one, um, which I don't recommend you mess with your substrate once you've inoculated your mushrooms. I'll go over that in a second. But basically, the straw for the, the pink oyster and the pine chips for the Phoenix mushroom have been fully colonized by the mycelium, and now they're waiting for optimum conditions. What I think is going on with the Phoenix mushroom is that it's actually a little too hot in here in our greenhouse. So I'm trying to figure out a fruiting chamber that I can set up outside of my house, um, somewhere where it's humid and probably around 70 to 80 degrees. Um, wherever you buy your mushroom spawn from, they will give you the specific conditions that that strain likes to fruit in. As far as our pink mushrooms or pink oysters, I know the temperatures are great. Um, it's a tropical mushroom, as I said. We're, we're in the perfect range. Um, I think it might be a little too dry. 
and we might not have quite enough fresh air exchange. So we're playing with that. Um, that said, most of this is all about trying something, observing, and then adjusting. So it might be that we can't grow mushrooms in the greenhouse. I think we can. I think we just need to figure out dialing in the system. Um, as far as colonization, I do want to show you what it looks like. Um, I don't recommend you ever open your buckets unless they're done fruiting because you're exposing them to contamination. More than likely, I'm going to use this to inoculate even more wood chips in my garden. Um, and kind of like you would make a King's Trephoria bed, I'm hoping to have a oyster bed. So I'm willing to risk some contamination, but I wanted to show you what these wood chips look like once they've been fully colonized. So you can see you got mycelium running all over these pine chips. Even here, we have some giant clumps. And I just think that that is a beautiful sight. Um, even if I was to do this in my garden and all it did was help break down the pine chips faster, in my opinion, that's great because I'm building soil by using a waste product that people in our community are trying to get rid of. So once again, thanks for joining us. And as always, if you have any questions or comments, don't hesitate um, to reach out to us. We love getting your feedback. Thanks for joining us and have a great day.